Howdy y'all, welcome back to Little Bits. And today we're gonna finish up the main components of the RC 2014 Pro. This contains the uh, bulk of the, the base Pro model, I'll call it. Uh, the Pro model is actually like a base system plus some stuff. Um, so uh, I also have a couple additional things. I have the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, input output module. This, this is so that you can use a keyboard and uh, HDMI out on a Raspberry Pi Zero, not Zero W, the Zero, the non-Wi-Fi version, um, and just connect it directly to a monitor and a uh, keyboard and use it as though it's a fully functional desktop computer, right? Um, now this has an FTDI pass-through that will allow me to use a monitor and also an FTDI serial cable like I usually use. So I don't have to plug in a keyboard directly to this. Uh, the main thing I want it for is the video output. Um, I know that the Raspberry Pi is significantly more powerful than the Z80 in a lot of ways. So, you know, it's a little weird to use this, but it's also just a very easy way and an official way to uh, support video output. Um, that'll probably be a different video. It depends on how long it takes to solder these up. I also have the digital IO uh, board. This gives you just lights that you can blink and buttons that you can press to input and output binary data manually. So uh, that's gonna be fun to play with as well. But this video is about getting the rest of this together um, and putting everything together and getting a basic command line on the base RC2014 Pro kit. So we'll get started uh, breaking this out, soldering it up. Um, I'm not sure exactly which all components are needed for what, but I will reference the documentation as necessary. So for now, let's just get these expansion boards out of here and see what they all are. And of course, like they're packaged really well, but they're also packaged in a way that doesn't make it super easy to open them. Um, bam, boop, big bonk, whoosh, tear it open like a beast. So this is for our compact flash, which has the CPM operating system on it. You can see it labeled here. Um, just some resistors, a logic chip. It looks like potential optional pins. Maybe the logic chip itself is optional. Uh, yeah, so that should be quick to solder. This is where the Z80 goes itself. Very little on here, so this just supplies the Z80. I think the, the original model had some other logic chips directly on here, which that probably makes it more flexible. Um, this is the SIO slash two. I talked to a few people who know more about this than me, and apparently it doesn't matter whether it's the slash zero, slash two, slash one, slash whatever. If you have one of the SIO chips, um, it will work, maybe not on this board. I think you have to wire it differently depending on them. So this is only compatible with the slash two version. But if I were to use a different version and wire everything up correctly, the same software would potentially work with each version of the chip. Nobody was able to really tell me what the difference is other than the pinout or why you would choose one or the, over the other. So uh, it seems like that's kind of irrelevant unless you're doing very advanced things that are probably obsolete. So uh, let's move on from that babbling session. Um, this, wow, this one looks complicated. This is the clock module, it looks like. Uh, da, 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 da. We get two clocks, dual clock and reset. So um, yeah, that'll be a, a fun solder job there. It's got a lot of stuff on it. Uh, boop. This is Oh, 64K RAM module. So we get a whole 64K of RAM. I think this is banking RAM that you use jumpers to select between. So it's not like I get a full 64K when I'm running it, though I think it can be configured 
to do so if if you put some logic chips and let it do its own bank switching but we'll see maybe this is more uh advanced than i think it is so we'll see what the documentation has to say and then this one here is pageable rom so this gives us pageable rom so we can install like multiple operating systems or whatever on here and swap between them with jumpers uh yeah, we'll see how advanced this one is as well. There's a lot of information on these things, so that's cool. Uh, once we understand what it all means, it will be very useful to have as a reference. Uh, these components are just kind of in the way. So uh, we'll probably start with the Z80 processor itself and uh, move on from there. So before we begin, we want to look at the actual bus connectors for these boards now uh, the documentation says that I should uh, prepare these supplied dual pin dual angled pins uh, by removing these pins here and that would leave a little section of uh, just empty plastic but now I have plenty of these single row versions of the same thing. So I think I'll just cut them each down to size, assuming that they fit together correctly, which it looks like they do. So I think I'm just gonna clip these down to size and use some of my own components to uh, do it better. All right, so I'm gonna do that off camera for multiple boards and then we'll just have them ready to solder up. So I've prepped um, some of these connectors. Some of the extended buses are not, or some of the boards that extend portions of the extended bus only support portions of the extended bus. And some of them have uh, connections that don't necessarily look like they all need to be attached. So I'll have to check the documentation for each of these as I'm working on them and finalize how I cut these down for each one, depending on how they need to be wired up. Um, but for this one, it's pretty straightforward. You just put them in like this, just making sure my pins are lined up, right? You can see, of course, it's two different um, single row, double row, but we wanna make sure this row lines up and it seems to and then we can solder that into place, make sure it's straight and beep boop bop, bippity beep.
So here it is installed in the board. You can see that it's a little crooked. <laughs> I think this will always just be something I do. I don't think I'll ever get those on there straight. Lesson learned was uh, cut these first. I actually you saw me put them in, clip them. They all fell out. So I, I after they were trimmed down to size, I bent them better. And just cut these first, bend them better. Install this, this, and the socket first. In fact, start with the, the resistors. I should have done those first, and I probably would have ended up with straighter pins as a result if I had. Uh, do these last. So, lessons learned. Moving on to the next uh, board. I'm gonna do this like the least amount of solder joints to the most, and do the most last. Here it is installed. You can see they're both at a bit of an angle. So if I keep up this trend, maybe it'll just be the jaunty angled machine. Um, they're not identical angles, but whatever. This does not use the extended bus, so it only plugs into the standard bus. It is usable on the old backplane with the uh, previous revision that I have. So I could potentially swap this out between both the classic and this pro model and use the CPM operating system, though I do need to use uh, a compatible RAM module with this, I believe, in order to use it with the older model. But that compatible RAM module is uh, included in this kit, so we'll get that put together soon. And actually, I need to put a chip in here, uh, but you can see it slots right back out here. Uh, let's find among our chips which are somewhere on this desk. This is what happens. I build a project and I just consume all my space with the parts of the project. So what we need here is a 74LS138, which I believe is a multiplexer, demultiplexer. It's decoding logic. Uh, 138. 138. Y'all have probably already spotted it while I'm still looking for it. Here's one. I'll have to look up what each of these are. I know some about these chips. They're very common uh, logic glue chips that have AND gates and OR gates and 
multiplexers, demultiplexers, but I haven't memorized which which numbers are which yet. And so far what I've seen uh, is that for all these modules, if the chips are um, horizontal, the pin one points towards pin one on all the boards. And if they are vertical, the pin one points up in this direction. Sorry, I don't mean to be giving you the middle finger, but uh, sometimes, you know, that's just, that's just the rude tood from this rude crude dude. Bend these pins a little bit, try to bend them evenly inwards. These are usually splayed out a little further than these sockets will accept. So you typically have to bend them in before they will slot into the socket. You don't want to force it. You want to let it, let them find their, their slots. Oops, there we go. All right, now we can plug it back in. And there's no kind of rhyme or reason to how I'm putting these in there. So we will work on the serial module next. value of the resistors is not labeled here, but the bill of materials in the documentation says that you need six one kilo ohm resistors and that's what these are.
Check out what I forgot to do on the last module. Four 1K resistors. So here I have everything laid out that I need for the dual clock module. Now this one's pretty interesting. It has this slot here for the original clock module, which you have seen that I, I have. Um, it's no longer available for purchase. You can still get the board made if you want to, but it's a little tiny board, so whatever. Um, but I could plug in my clock module here to derive clock two from a separate clock. I have no real reason to do that, of course. Uh, this one clock can output to both these clock signals and you can divide the clock signals. I guess that's what these resistors here are for. Uh, you can divide the clock signal from seven to these fractions and get down to slower and slower clocks and do different things with them, drive different you know, serial modules if you want is one of the examples. Now I have everything laid out in the order that I need it. So this is our 10K resistor. This is our 1K resistor. This is our one uh, mega ohm resistor, I guess mega, right? I don't know. Uh, this is our 2.2K resistor and here's two more 2.2K resistors for over here. Now this is an optional thing as well. Both of these are optional. Um, I'm not going to populate either of these really. I think these re resistors are here for this, but I'm going to put those there. You're supposed to put a toggle switch here, a, a single pole double throw switch so that you can manually send clock signals to, uh, to the board, but I'm probably not going to use that. And the examples I see have just header pins, angled header pins pointing out this way such that you could use a jumper to toggle, but um, that seems tedious. So I'm just not gonna populate this. If I get a switch later, maybe I'll, I'll throw it on there. Um, yeah, there's a surprising amount of optional footprints on a lot of these boards. Anyway, I am going to take a break and come back tomorrow and put this one together.
time travel has occurred. So between the last scene in this video and this scene in this video, like a month and a half has passed. So uh, I have two boards left. Um, I cleaned and arranged my office in that time and it is a much better workspace. So uh, hopefully that will be conducive to not ending up with a month and a half between filming portions of a single project. All right, here we go, we're gonna move on. Um, so we have the RAM chip and the ROM chip. Uh, these both look about as complicated as one another, uh, with this one looking slightly more complicated to me, potentially. So we'll start with this one. Now it is a million times more organized than it was, and I am finding myself able to do projects and put stuff away where it belongs and find all the tools I need. So, um, yeah, my hope is that this will speed things up dramatically. Anyway, back to the show.
we are done. Now the jumpers on this one and the jumpers on the previous one are not set the way they need to be set. Uh, we do still need to socket these uh, chips. Um, ignore this thing. This is just stored here. Uh, that's for another project. It didn't come with this kit. One of the downsides to this computer build is that getting these modules in and out can be a delicate situation. So you need to be very careful. So uh, I'm gonna get this finalized, put together. Uh, I'll figure out the jumper situation and I'll explain what I'm doing in order to boot the base operating system. I'm gonna try and boot into the included um, CPM and demonstrate that CPM a little bit. From there on, I'm going to work on my own software and try to get Collapse OS running on this thing. But that'll be a separate project and a separate video. Uh, yeah, now let's put this together. Plop it any old where. We're going to just pop it in. You know what? We got spaces. We got spaces. Let's just do another space for now. Get it in there. All right, uh, so this got a couple little crooked fellas in there. I got better at keeping them straight as I built. Uh, yeah, I do like it and we'll get it fired up, make sure it works. Do some demos. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this will serve as your build guide.